Hi, and welcome back. In this part of our video series, we'll focus on setting up the Android development environment for React Native CLI on macOS. Before we begin, make sure you have around 10 to 15 gigabytes of free space to accommodate the additional tools and dependencies we are going to be installing. Since we have already set up some tools during the iOS development setup, the Android setup will require fewer steps, but we are going to have to go to the React Native official website to see what is the latest guidance on setting up the development environment for development OS, which is Mac OS and target OS Android. So this is the list of the dependencies that we're going to need to install. We have already installed Node and Watchman and React Native command line interface. So what's left to do is to install the JDK and Android Studio. So let's start by installing the Java development kit. And while we're going to be doing that, I am going to explain to you exactly what Java development kit is. So I'm just going to copy these two commands here and then just click on enter and let's start talking about what Java development kit is. The JDK is an essential component for React Native Android applications. It provides the necessary tools and libraries to compile, debug, and run Java code, which is the foundation for Android development. While the JDK installation is in progress, let me explain why we need it. React Native bridges JavaScript code with native code, allowing us to interact with device features and APIs. To do this on Android, we need to write some native code in Java. The JDK enables us to compile and run this Java code, ensuring seamless communication between our React Native app and the Android platform. So let's just enter the password now. And great, all of this was installed successfully. Let me run this last command as well. I think it's just going to display information about the JDK that's been installed. Great. So after that, we are going to need to install the Android development environment. So the first thing that we're going to do is install Android Studio. So let's just click on this link and we're going to be redirected to the Android Studio page. Let's just click on downloading this and say that we have read and agreed to the terms and conditions. And right now I'm on the Intel chip, so I'm going to click on this. Great, so we're going to just download this. And while we wait for it, I can tell you exactly why we need Android Studio. So Android Studio acts as our primary development environment, offering powerful code editing, debugging, and testing capabilities. It also provides Android Virtual Device or AVD Manager, allowing us to create and manage virtual devices for testing our React Native apps. So these AVDs are going to be something similar to the simulator of iOS. Great, so now that Android Studio is downloaded, I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to drag Android Studio to my applications and it's going to start installing. So let's wait for this to complete for a couple of seconds here. Great, so it has been installed and now we're gonna have to set up a couple of other things. So I'm just going to open up Android Studio and I'm going to follow the installation guideline right here in the documentation. So I'm not going to import any settings. I'm just going to go with the normal setup. I'm not going to send any statistics to anywhere. And here I'm just going to click on next. I'm going to go with the standard installation process. I do like the dark mode, so that's a personal choice. You can choose whatever you like. And here we go. We are going to be installing all of these and I'm going to click on next. And here I'm going to have to accept and I'm going to have to accept right here as well. And then I'm going to click on finish. So now some things are going to be set up for us and right after these components are downloaded and installed, we're gonna have to make sure that everything that we needed 
has been installed and we might have to actually install a couple of more things. So let's wait for this to complete. And once this is completed, just come back to the video. Great, so everything has been installed. Let's just click on finish. And now let's check on a couple of other things. So here we want to make sure that everything has been installed as we needed it to be. So let's click on more actions right here. And then let's click on the SDK manager. And we should see the SDK platforms right here. And we should make sure that Android 13 Tiramisu is checked off here. And since it's not, I'm just going to click here. Let me see all the package details for Android 13. So I need the SDK platform 33, which is checked off right here. And then I will need this part right here because I have the Intel chip. So let's see. So I would need this one. And then I'm going to click on apply and OK. And I'm going to accept the terms and conditions, click on next and wait for this to download. Once it's downloaded, please come back to the video and we can continue with our setup. Great, so now that this is done and completed, let's just click on finish and click on apply. So our changes are applied. And great, after that we're done, let's just click on OK. And what we want to do after is the configuration of Android home environment variable, which is going to be done using these lines right here. And we're gonna use these lines and we're gonna copy them and we're gonna paste them into these files. So now it says here that we can just paste these lines in one of these files, but I do recommend creating all of them and putting these lines in each of these files because you might face some issues later in the course if you don't have them in all of the files. So let's just do it now so that you don't have any hassles down the road. Great. So let's do sudo which gives us administrator rights and then nano, which is the editor that we're gonna open up inside the terminal. And then let's just copy this Z profile file here, paste it here and then click on okay. Now I'm going to enter my password. You can enter yours. And here, as I said, let's just copy this and paste it here. And to save, you can just click on control X and then just say Y or yes, and then just click on enter and that's it. Now, if you go back and run this command again, you're going to see this appear right there, which means that it has been saved. Great, so now let's do the same for this file right here. So let's just copy this file name and do sudo nano and this file name, click on enter. If this file didn't exist before, we're just creating it right now, which is completely fine. I'm just going to paste this here, click on Control X again, then click on Y and then enter. And we're going to repeat this tab for the bash profile as well. So let's just enter bash profile right here. Let's paste this here, Control X again, and then Y for yes, and then enter. And let's run this for the last time for bash rc file. Let's paste this here, control x and then y and then enter and great. We are done with this. Now, if we want to see that Android home has been set, we can run this command right here. Let's copy this and paste it here. And I'm just going to click on enter and we see nothing. And this is actually expected because if you want to see these changes reflected, you might actually have to quit the terminal and then open this terminal again. And then you can just click on up arrow so that you get the last command that you ran in the terminal and then click on enter. And you're going to see the path of Android home written in this variable, which was set from here. Great, so our setup is complete. Now, 
the last thing that we need to do is make sure that we have some kind of AVD set up so that we can open up a virtual device where we're going to see our application running. So let's just go to virtual device manager. And here we actually see that Pixel 3a has been installed. Let's create one more device. Let's go with Pixel 4a maybe, and then click on next. I'm going to use Tiramisu and 33rd API level since this is what we just installed. So I'm going to click on next. I'm going to finish this up. Great. So now we have Pixel 4a that runs on API 33. I'm going to click on play to launch the emulator. Let's wait for this. Great. The emulator is launching. We don't need this device manager anymore. I'm going to move this emulator right here. It's going to start up. And while it's starting up, let's remember our awesome project that we set up for the iOS setup, right? We can run that same project just for the Android. And what we're going to have to do for that is actually just make sure that we move into the directory desktop where I have my awesome project set up. You can see the awesome project right here. And then I'm going to change my directory again and go inside the awesome project. And to run this application that we have created, all I need to do is say MPX React Native run Android. If I wanted to run this for iOS and I had the setup, which we have completed in the previous video, you would just say run iOS, but in this case, we're just going to say run Android. And since the simulator is booted up already, we can click on enter and wait for the build to complete. We see the Metro Bundler running here already, and we're going to leave it running. And this is going to find our emulator. So let's wait for this to complete and come back to the video once your Android application runs. So here we see actually that something has failed. I am going to let this execution to be finished. And if I see that everything succeeds here, I'm going to try to rerun this one more time because Metro Bundler might not have had the latest information for the things that are getting built right here. Great. So nothing has actually failed as we see. The build was successful and Metro Bundler understood it. So I actually didn't even need to rerun anything. It is running it automatically and the application should just appear here right now. Great. We see the same thing appearing here as we saw on the iOS simulator. Our installation has gone successfully both for iOS and Android. But I do want to say that if you encounter any issues or have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to ask in the Q&A section. And I am here to assist you and other people are going to be here to share your problems and assist you with their knowledge as well. So thank you so much for watching. We're going to continue our React Native journey and start creating amazing applications together.